Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid dynamics. This video is about the continuum approximation. Uh, we saw in the definition of a fluid that a continuum is a substance that is infinitely divisible. And we make that assumption for matter. But here we are going to go a little more into this definition and perhaps even define it uh, quantitatively. The quantitative definition is as follows. As you know that matter is made of atoms and molecules and these molecules are in constant state of thermal motion. The mean free path of the molecules is the length these molecules travel in a straight line before they collide with other molecules and alter which alters their path so let us call little l as the mean free path in addition to the mean free path you can also think of the length scale of the flow for example if you have flow around a uh, vehicle like a car then the car is maybe a couple of meters in its size so if you go more than a couple of meters away from the car uh, the influence that the car has on the surrounding air in terms of the flow that it sets up starts to decay away and therefore for an object like a car the length scale over which the flow varies would be about the size of the car like two meters we will see a few other examples a little later but if capital L is the length scale of the flow then the ratio of the mean free path little l to the flow length scale capital L determines whether continuum approximation could be applied in particular if this ratio L over L is small is a small number which it is for many day-to-day -day, um, uh, flows then the continuum approximation will be considered to be valid for example typically uh, L is of the orders of 1 micron to 1 nanometer and capital L in our day-to-day -day life would be from 1 centimeter to maybe tens of meters for example if you have uh, aircraft flying through air and this ratio L over L then would be in the range um, if I take the largest to the smallest one crown to one centimeter that would be 10 to the minus 4 to the smallest to largest 10 1 nanometer to 10 meter would be 10 to the minus 10 as you can see these are extremely small numbers and then we take continuum approximation to be a valid approximation for the flow. Let's look at two examples where continuum approximation would not be valid as a way to see, uh, as a way to build our intuition. So the first example is water flowing through carbon nanotubes. So that's our first example. Right water flowing through carbon nanotubes. So carbon nanotubes are essentially tubular shaped structures made from carbon atoms uh, which bond with, e with each other through van der Waals force. Right. A picture is shown here. The, every point on the uh, vertex of the hexagon is a carbon atom and the edges of the hexagon show bonds between carbon atoms and the red and blue objects there indicate water molecules flowing through the carbon nanotube. Now in this case the diameter of the carbon nanotube could be as small as 0 0.4 nanometers and the mean free path of water molecules is about uh, what is it 
0.25 nanometers. So the ratio L over L, here we take uh, the diameter of the tube to be the, uh, the length scale of the flow because near the middle of the tube the flow is the fastest but near the walls the flow is impeded by friction with the carbon atoms and they slowed down. So the flow varies over the length comparable to the diameter of the tube. So we take that as the length scale. This is another example of how one chooses the length scale. The ratio of mean free path to the length scale is 0 0.25 by 0 0.4. I think this is 0 0.625. As you can see, this is not a small number. And therefore, uh, the continuum hypothesis is likely not to be valid. Likely not. Oops, sorry. Applicable. Okay, let's move on to the next example. The second example is that of the International Space Station. The International Space Station orbits the Earth approximately um, 400 kilometers above mean sea level. That's the surface of Earth. And at that distance uh, you will be you may or may not be surprised the mean free path the atmosphere is so dilute it's so dilute but it is not non-existent there is a very tiny amount of air at this altitude uh, the mean free path is about 20 kilometers which means an air molecule on average would travel 20 kilometers before it collides with another air molecule. The size of the, uh, uh, the, the International Space Station is uh, I think 70, um, what is it, 79 meters by 109 meters so we will take it to be approximately 100 meters this is just like the example of the car the car's size determines the length scale of the flow that it sets up and therefore in this case l over l the ratio of the two is 20 kilometers divided by 100 meters which is um, 2 followed by 4 zeros 200 so definitely not small in fact it is large and therefore this is an obvious situation where continuum hypothesis is not applicable uh, the continuum is not applicable in the process of defining when a flow can be considered continuum or not uh, we have seen our first dimensionless number this is the Knudsen number the Knudsen number is the ratio of two lengths the mean free path of the material of the substance of the fluid divided by the length scale of the flow and because it is a ratio of two lengths um, the number itself is devoid of dimensions which means in every system of units it has the same value such numbers are called dimensionless numbers and they uh, play a big role in fluid dynamics also in physics uh, we are going to see many more of these numbers uh, throughout this module 
A consequence of continuum hypothesis, one that we are going to use throughout fluid mechanics, is the emergence of continuum fields. Continuum fields are continuous functions of spatial coordinates that represent physical quantities. Consider this simple example to illustrate uh, this principle. In this example, an aircraft flying at speed v compresses the air in front of it and modifies its density. To characterize this modification, consider the average density of air in a ball of radius r centered at x. This ball is denoted b subscript r of x. The average density in this ball is given by the ratio of the mass of air in this ball divided by the volume of the ball. Now consider shrinking the ball to smaller values of r. If, we were to, if air were infinitely divisible, we would write the limit as r goes to zero of this average density and then define a density field, density as a function of the spatial coordinates of x. Can we take this limit in reality? Let us plot the average density as a function of the radius of the ball. In this plot, r ranges from 1 kilometer, that's about 1000 kilometers, all the way down to a nanometer, which is 1 billionth of a meter. For very, very large r, say 1 kilometer and greater, the aircraft is much smaller than the ball and therefore the average density will be approximately the density of ambient air. As R reduces and becomes comparable to the height of the aircraft, which is the length scale of the flow in this case, uh, say a few meters, the average density starts to rise. Once r becomes smaller than a few centimeters, the average density does not depend on r any longer. In this range, for r between, let's say, 10 to the minus 5 meters and 10 to the minus 2 meters, the precise value of r does not matter. This is the continuum range for r. For even smaller values of r, the molecular nature of air starts to play a role and the average density depends on how many molecules are contained in the ball. This de dependence becomes more and more sensitive as R becomes smaller than the mean free path. This is crudely shown as oscillations in the average density field as a function of R. The condition mean free path over length scale L over L much less than 1 implies that there exists a range of r, labeled here as the continuum range, in which the average density could be taken to be independent of r and the limit to be attained, the limit of r going to zero to be attained. Therefore, truncating the limit r goes to zero to this continuum range will be termed as taking the continuum limit. In this way, a continuous density field emerges from the continuum approximation other continuous fields emerge similarly. This is the end of the video on continuum approximation. See you in the next one.